Alrighty, so we got the main event for the April 11th card. It's Marvin Vittori versus Darren Till. Marvin Vittori is on a four-fight win streak. Darren Till has lost three of his last four, so two careers on different trajectories right now. Uh, but i got to say, Darren Till has faced much better competition, and he's not like on some massive losing streak or anything. He beat Kelvin Gastelum two fights ago, so he's not on a, you know, he's not threat of losing his job or anything. It's just you never love losing three of your last four. Uh, but anyway, we'll break down the strike into these two. Alright, so for Vittori, he's a southpaw. Same with Darren Till, actually. Uh, the majority of Vittori's stand-up is that, you know, straight left. Uh, mostly just, all, a lot of the time he'll just throw it naked, which just means by itself. Uh, and, you know, Darren Till throws the straight, have, uh, straight left a lot as well, I think. Both those guys kind of base their game plans around, you know, their power straight. Uh, but yeah, Vittori is definitely more effective on the front foot. Darren Till, he looks to maintain, you know, good dis uh, kickboxing distance and looks to be in control of the range where the fight has taken place. He also looks to, you know, control the range just so he can uh, get the distance of his opponent and then look to be a sniper in there. That's really what he tries to do. Uh, and he seems a little more comfortable versing southpaws. Just on tape, he seems to open up a little bit more. And uh, both these guys are southpaws, so, you know, it's an unusual look for both. And generally what they say in boxing is when, you know, they're equally skilled in southpaws, you know, who has the better right hand. Sorry, lead hand. Well, yeah, lead hand, right hand. Um, But yeah, I, I'd probably give it to Darren Till, just because... I think he mixes it up a bit more. Vittori does a nice jab, which, you know, could definitely come into play here. Uh, but, you know, because uh, I think Whitaker was landing a few good jabs on Darren Till in their fight as Till was closing distance. But yeah, the majority of Till's offense is coming from the naked straight left hand. He also has a nice straight elbow as his opponent closes distance. He hit that on Whitaker, dropped him. Uh, for Marm Vittori, he can bite on feints a little bit. And, you know, one thing that Darren Till does is he, that he feints a lot. And, you know, Marm Vittori makes these big movements. Like, his arms are generally not near his face. But, you know, when you feint, you kind of draw the arms away from his face and generally looks to catch the punch, it seems like. And he also will take the back foot if you feint him and you, you know, you're just smart about your feinting and your pressure and your footwork. Like, uh, when Hermanson was fainting, and when he was, you know, trying to take the front foot, Marvin kind of let him not, without too much resistance, and then he realised he needed to be the one going forward. Uh, but throughout the whole fight against Adesanya, Marvin was on the back foot, and it was just because of the feints, and he was freezing up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, on the back foot, Marvin will lean back to avoid strikes. Uh, he'll either look for the, to lean back, or he'll look for the slip too. Uh, on the back foot, he can, yeah, reach for those hands or the clinch just when his opponent gets in range, which is, you know, not the greatest thing, but generally his hands aren't very close to his chin. Uh, so another thing that Darren Till does against southpaws is that he, he will throw the leg kick, he'll throw the low calf kick, and Marvin doesn't check low calf kicks because generally it's not a thing he has to worry about where he's normally versing a, an orthodox and he's a southpaw, uh, but in this fight, it's definitely something I think uh, Till could use. Uh, but also, one thing to, Darren Till does is that he'll clinch up if his opponent closes distance too aggressively. Uh, he'll look for a left elbow off the clinch. If you watch the Gaslam fight, that's pretty much what I'm talking about. A lot. Of, that's pretty much how he, you know, stifled Gaslam's game plan and his pressure. Uh, but yeah, Till, he does have his hands low when committing hard to a boxing combination. Uh, yeah, just when he's throwing a combination, he seems to have his hands low. That's how Woodley caught him. Pretty sure that's how Jorge caught him. Uh, but yeah, just a good example is the time Woodley fight. Didn't throw any strikes. And then he comes in with this huge one-two. Right, uh, left hand nowhere near his chin when he's throwing the jab. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, he can get caught. Uh, for the grappling for these two, for Marvin Vittori. Alright, so 
Yeah, for Vittori in the grappling department, he will go for a driving single, uh, and then, you know, with the left overhook, try and ground his opponent. He'll also, you know, commit to a driving double, bring him onto the fence. Once he's got you down on the mat, he'll look to get in half guard, look for control and short ground and pound. And that's generally near the fence because a lot of his takedowns happen near the fence. Now with Darren Till, he doesn't seem like he has too much off his back, in my opinion. Whenever he's got, whenever he's got taken down, he's been controlled fairly easily. Uh, it has, doesn't seem like he's had too much. I'm going off the Woodley fight and I'm going off the Dolby fight, though. So, you know, a lot of variables in that one, but it's just what I have to go off. Uh, but yeah, he will give his back to get up as well. So how these guys win their fights... Uh, so for Mum Vittori, he's got great cardio, great volume. We saw that in the Hermanson fight. Kept his pace the whole way through. Uh, he seems like he's very well-rounded, mixed martial artist, and especially uh, when he's aggressive is when he's doing very well. But also, he's very durable, which helps with the type of style that he employs. Uh, I don't think he's ever been finished, but yeah, just in general, very durable bloke. Uh, so for Darren Till, he... Uh, Uses constant feints, which is good, um, especially in this matchup. Uh, he seems to have a little bit of power as well. Masvidal did say he was the hardest hitter he's ever faced, which was surprising to me. I didn't think Till hit that hard, but, uh, you know, Masvidal has faced a lot of opponent, but yeah, you, lo you look at his record, and he's never really faced any many power punches has Masvidal. But still, you know, feather in the cap for a guy that's versus Paul Daly and the likes of that. Uh, until he does have good takedown defense as well, he has very strong hips, uh, it's very hard to take this guy down. Uh, so how these guys lose their fights? Uh, for Darren Till, he's had his bell rung a few times lately. I think Whitaker dropped him, Woodley dropped him, and George shut his lights out pretty much. Uh, but yeah, he seems to kind of leave himself open a little bit on the feet, especially when he's throwing combinations. Also, he does have low volume. He seems to have decent cardio, so I'm, I bet he could up his volume up a little bit, but it's generally the type of counter-striking, type of sniping style that he likes to take into fights, which leads to that low volume. Also, his grappling doesn't seem to be all that to me, but yeah, we haven't really seen it too much lately. And he's generally pretty good at keeping fights on the feet. Uh, for Vittori, so it's when he's too passive or when he's waiting... Good example is that of that is the Adesanya fight. He was just m much too passive. He had much more success when he was on the front foot. Uh, but yeah, when he was reacting to the feints and just biting on him really hard, he was having no success at all. All right, pass the victory for these two. All right, for Darren Till, get those feints going. Feints, just constant feints, really. Keep it at kickboxing range. Don't want to get him... In, well, you don't want to let him get into the pocket. Also, throw those leg kicks. He doesn't check them at all. Commit to, you know, commit to your strikes after you gain the read of his reactions on a fake. So that's something you didn't do enough, in my opinion, in the uh, Whitaker fight, was when he got the big reactions drawn out of Whitaker, but he just didn't follow up or didn't really do anything with them, which was just kind of allowing Whitaker to keep, you know, doing his own thing, and not really worrying about the feints because he knew there was nothing coming after it. For Vittori, I think uh, I think you're doing well to mix in some wrestling here. So yeah, set up takedowns. You want to get him kind of leaning back, like uh, so he will lean back to avoid a lot of his a lot of offense. So especially if you threw a right straight, sorry a left straight in my opinion, I think he would lean back to avoid it, or you throw a high kick, or just a body kick. No, no, no. Yeah, probably a high kick. Uh, he would be leaning back to avoid it. Uh, and then that kind of exposes his legs a little bit. And you can go for a driving, you know, double from there and try and get him onto the fence. Uh, but also look to extend your combinations, which is something that Till is very good at, you know, uh, defending or avoiding the first strike. But when you extend the combinations on him, he will get hit uh, by those follow-up punches. Like... Masvidal got him with, you know. Uh, Whitaker had success just throwing singular strikes, so it is possible, but I think you have more success when you extend the combinations. Uh, so how I see this fight going, 
All right, so off the bat, I think Marvin will definitely come out as the aggressor. Try to push Till back, land some, you know, left hands. Around the midway mark of round one, I think maybe late round one, I think Marvin will slow down with his aggression due to the feints of Till. You know, and then, you know, Till kind of gets in a rhythm of his own. Eventually around the second, third round, you know, Marvin and Cordero, they figure out that they, you know, need to be the aggressor in this matchup and then start having success in the grappling exchanges. I think, you know, Vittori gets his grappling going later on in the fight. Uh, Till, you know, in my opinion, is much sharper on the feet, but I don't see Marvin, you know, having too much success with his grappling heavy game plan, in my opinion. I think Till's takedown defense is good enough for the, for the level of wrestling that Marvin comes in with. Uh, but yeah, I believe Till will be able to stay on his feet for the majority of the fight. All that being said, I think Marvin has the cardio and the grappling edge, so it's kind of hard to bet against him because, you know, he will be pushing the pace and, you know, Till will be likely falling behind on the volume. Uh, Till's game plan or, you know, the type of style that he brings into fights, it's uh, similar to McGregor's and it's just kind of been figured out by his competition now. Like, you know... In when he first came to the UFC, he was having a lot of success with it because uh, he had very good timing and you know with his left hand and stuff. But you know you need to have more than that, and you need to diversify your game. And that's you know a good example of that is recently is Conor McGregor, who just has, is very talented, very skilled at one thing. Probably say he's a specialist. And, you know, guys like Dustin Poirier, who are very well-rounded and are durable, just, they can just do enough, and they just, you know, they have so many more weapons that they can go to, that they just find ways to win fights when, you know, one of their weapons isn't working. Whereas guys like Till, McGregor, they kind of don't really have that plan B, really. Uh, but yeah, that's just, you know, the stepping back from things that's how i see it uh but yeah i think he'll need to diversify his game plans a little you know soon or he'll never break through to that you know upper echelon of middleweight or welterweight fighters uh, i think till you know all that being said i think till might edge this one and raise a close decision i think because it's gonna majority of it is gonna play out on the feet i think till's gonna be landing the better shots i think he'll fall behind on the volume, so I believe it'll be very close decision. Uh, it just depends on what the judges are viewing, and I think it might be a controversial decision, and I think it might go in favour of Darren Till. Uh, but I'm not confident in my prediction. Yeah, the prediction is Darren Till by decision, but I'm not confident, and I think it's very close. So I'll probably say 50.5% in favour of Till, and 495 for the comeback on Marvin. So, in my opinion, I don't have the greatest read on this fight, and I don't, I'm not hugely confident in my prediction. Uh, but if Darren Till were to get up to like $2.50 or $2.60, or if Marvin were to get up to $2.60 or $2.50 or whatever I said, uh, I would probably look into betting either one of those. But yeah, in my opinion, out of Pick'em, it's probably about right, or even just above, it's probably about right.